This morning, we're going to talk about our spiritual DNA. And it's a great thing because last night, as um, I was putting the finish, finish, finishing touches on my message, um, I got a ding from uh, Facebook, and I looked into it, and I found something very interesting on Facebook. I don't know, I'll take that as a confirmation of what I'm supposed to preach today. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it states, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We, as humans, you know, I always like when Pastor Jim says, is everyone here human? I'm just waiting for the day that he says, are there any aliens here? I want to raise up my hand. <laughs> I am a legal alien. We humans are triune in God's image. In body, soul, and spirit. And we have a physical DNA, a spiritual DNA, and I believe a soulish DNA. But today we're going to focus and we're going to look into our spiritual DNA. DNA fingerprinting is a test to identify and to evaluate the genetic information which is called deoxyribonucleic acid. You don't know how many times I practiced that. <laughs> In a person's cell. There is a spiritual genetic information within you and within me that determines who you are and most important, whose you are. Because of spiritual DNA, there are no fatherless kids in the family of God. There are no orphans in the family of God. Because we do have a father. A father that fulfills his responsibilities, obligations as a father in providing, in protecting, in nourishing, and in instructing. But see, you did not get your spiritual DNA when you were conceived by your daddy and your mommy. Our spiritual DNA, our spiritual genetic information is activated when you and I are born again. Born into the family of God. You see, you and I, we have a spiritual bloodline. And that's what the DNA follows through is the paternal bloodline. And we have a spiritual paternal bloodline that was shed at the cross when Jesus said, this is my blood, my DNA that was shed for you. One, you know, never wonders or questions who the mother of the child is. Well, duh. <laughs> However, some, in some instances, one may wonder, who's your daddy? Who's your dad? Who's your papa? And that's where these DNA tests come in to determine who's your daddy. And today I'm asking you, who's your Abba? Who's your daddy? Who's your father? A DNA test is done to determine fatherhood. Fatherhood and sonship. The DNA test is used to determine whether 
a family relationship exists between two people or a group of people. Spiritual DNA, therefore, not only determines fatherhood, sonship, but a spiritual family relationship, which is called the church. Look around. This is your family. These are your brothers. These are your sisters. You will never be fatherless. You will never be sisterless or brotherless because you have a family. You have an immediate family with God as your father and with us in the local congregation. This is your immediate family. But praise God, we also have an extended family throughout the world. No matter what part, what corner of this planet, well, it's not corners because it's round, but no matter what part of, the, of this planet we go, you will have a brother or a sister at that location. I remember one time we were traveling to, um, to Kansas, I think, uh, to a mission, uh, to a uh, church conference. And we were going through St. Louis, and our vehicle broke down. And the first thing that my buddy and I did that when we broke down is at that time we went to a phone booth. No, we didn't turn to Superman. <laughs> we grabbed a phone book and we started looking up the, for the name of the churches in the denomination that we were affiliated with at that time. And we saw several. And of course, not being from St. Louis, we didn't know which one was close and which one was further. So we uh, said, okay, Lord, we'll just, let's try this one. We called. And it happened to be one that was fairly close by. And the pastor answered and said, Pastor, we are so-and-so, and, -so and uh, we're on the way from Chicago to Kansas, and our car broke down, and um, we're kind of uh, in a difficult situation. My brother, who I never met before, that lived there in that city where I broke down, he said, don't worry. I'm on my way. And I'll come with one of the brothers that's a mechanic. Woo! Yes! No matter where we are, no matter where you are, no matter what situation you're in, no matter what part of the world you're in, you have family. Because of faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3. So in Christ Jesus... You are all children of God through faith. Now, very clear for you to understand this. This is not saying you are all children of God. Because not all are children of God. There are those that are children of God and those that have not yet chosen to become children of God. But the scripture says, in Christ Jesus. You want a part of this? You want some of this? In Christ Jesus. It's yours. You can have it. In Christ Jesus, you then are a child of God through faith. For it is by faith that we are saved. Romans 8. 14, for those that are led by the Spirit of God, in other words, walking in your spiritual DNA, are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are, oh, I like this, 
Look to your neighbor and say, I am an heir with Christ. I am an heir. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Now, at some point, we're going to need to unpack that, but it's not going to be today because it will take us probably another three hours. But it is an amazing thing to be heirs and co-heirs with Christ. Indeed, we share, if indeed we share his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Eh, I don't know if I like that part too much. Well, do we want to live in victory? If we don't hold through suffering, how can, can we claim victory? If there's no trials, no suffering, but in victory, in, in sufferings, through it all, he walks with us Amen. and in us and gives us the victory. And we glorify in the sufferings that we may share in his glory. In the Greek word for adoption to sonship is a term referring to, and catch this, because in the spiritual realm, it's all about legal status or a stratus of legal standing. But in the Greek, the word for adoption to sonship is a term referring to a full legal standing of an adopted male error in the Roman culture. So as heirs and adopted into the family of God, you, my brother, you, my sister, are in a full legal standing of an adopted male error of God's benefits, blessings, and status in his kingdom. You possess everything that God has. He has given you everything and said, this is yours. There is the covenant that God has made with us. It's a fatherhood covenant with us as his children. And that's why scripture says, and I'll repeat it at some point later, that the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Because we are co-heirs of God in Christ Jesus. Or we are co-heirs of Christ. Fatherhood then determines identity, heritage, and roots. You know, and talking about roots, some trace the roots back to a monkey and a beaver, an evolutionary accident that happened to evolve into what humanity is today. But cross point, let me share with you the good news this morning. That our roots are not accidental, are not to an amoeba or to a monkey. Our roots trace back to the creator of heaven and earth. The mighty hand of God, the very mind, the very heart of God, when he talked with himself and said, let us make men. Let us make mankind in our image and in our likeness. We find this in Genesis 1.26. So that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. So we, as we trace our roots, our roots go back to the very hand of God. It is amazing how God took time to form and to give shape and to give purpose to who we are. Because you see, in the mind and the heart of those that believe that their roots trace back to the Big Bang or to an amoeba or to a monkey, they probably think that they are the result of an accident and therefore have no meaning in their life, no purpose, 
no accountability, because to acknowledge that they came, the origins or the roots are from God, then they have to acknowledge that there are certain accountabilities for moralities and for values, for standards. There is no reason, that's why there's no reason so many have lived, that are living now, and throughout their life, they're always asking the question, what is my purpose? Why am I even here? There's a void. There's a blank. If your thought is that you were an accident, of course. We, on the other hand, we know that we, are, we were created from the very hand of God with foreknowledge, with identity, with a plan, and with a purpose. And I think that's something that we really need to get deep, deep down in our spirit, in our mind, in our hearts. And will you repeat with me, I have been created by God with a purpose, a plan, a destiny, intentionally for his kingdom. You see, God took dirt with his hand and gave an intentional form and purpose to every single inch of your body. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. And from man's rib, he formed with his very hand every single detail of woman. He gave man and woman their very own identity, purpose, and function, thereby establishing marriage between a man and a woman and creating the family. Let's look at Genesis 1. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. Your family is blessed of God directly. No indirectness, directly. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue. You see, brother and sister, the scripture declares in Psalm 1, uh, I'm sorry, Psalm 139, for you created my inner being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your words are wonderful. You know, when I read that, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I could see David saying, looking in the mirror and says, your works are wonderful. <laughs> I don't know, that's what it says there. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. A little humility there, huh? My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. Uh, some would call it a fetus today. All the days, I knew I should have stayed away from political things. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You weren't an accident. Far from it. God created you, he formed you, and he saw you even before your days began. He formed you in the womb of your mama. No accident. 
It is God. Those are our roots. That's what our DNA determines. We are not an accident. We are an intentional act of God. To live an abundant life, fulfilling his purpose, which is an everlasting and eternal relationship with our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven. Jesus gives us right there our purpose in life. You read the Lord's Prayer and you will find your purpose in life. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I, my purpose is to glorify his name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. My purpose is ensuring that his will is done on earth as it is in heaven as his kingdom kid, as his kingdom people. That's our purpose. An eternal, everlasting relationship with the Father. That is our spiritual DNA, our rights and responsibilities. That is why scripture also declares that we are co-heirs with Christ Jesus, and as he is, so are we in this world. Luke 22, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's a new covenant in my DNA, which I poured out for you. See, we have been grafted, adopted, brought into the family of God. Grafted into the olive branch, according to Romans 11, we have been grafted in among, among the others and now share the nourishing. Catch this. We now share the nourishing, the strengthening, the empowerment, the building up, sap, the life, the essence of God. The nourishing sap from the olive root, which is Christ Jesus. That spiritual DNA, that, that nourishing sap from the root is what gives us the life, what gives us our graftedness into God's kingdom. It's what brings you and I into the manifold benefits and blessings of God. It's what brings you and I into that DNA activated within us when we say, yes, Jesus, you are Lord, you are Christ, you are Son of the living God, and I surrender my life to you. Come into my life. I surrender all that I am to you. And at that point, that spiritual DNA, that genetic information goes into effect in your life. We have been grafted from the olive root Jesus, who said also in John 15, I am the vine. Now catch this, because God is a God of balance and order. Yes, he gives us benefits and, and power and authority and all this, but he does his part and we do our part. Oops, sorry. <laughs> oh, I get too excited sometimes. Just give me the night that God gave me this message, this theme. I couldn't sleep the whole night. God was just bombarding ideas and thoughts and scriptures and concepts and things. And, and, and throughout the night, and I couldn't sleep. I said, really, God? This can't wait until the morning? Uh, shut up, pay attention. I'll give you the rest that you need. In, Jesus says in John, I am the vine, you are the, van the branches. If you, can say me, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. It's a working together, 
God does his part. We do our part. We abide in him. We abide in his word. We abide in his presence. We establish that relationship. We will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. So branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. But you see, we have his DNA within us, that nourishing sap flowing within us. Christ is in us, the hope of glory. Our Father, he decrees, he establishes in his word that we have been made an essential part of his plan and his purpose for humanity. There's no other plan. There's no plan B. You are the family, and you are to be family. In John 14, 12 through 13, Verily I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Doesn't that sound awesome? That is the reality of scripture. That is the reality of what God intends for his church. That is the reality of our genetic information, our spiritual DNA. But I truly believe that the church of Jesus Christ is living far below our God-ordained, God-destined purpose. And in some cases, living in lack, sickness, poverty, uncertainty, confusion, and strife. It is my conviction that we, the church, have sold ourselves short of the reality of the measure of whom we are, what we have, and that which we can do in Christ Jesus as God's covenant children. I truly believe that Cross Point, there is an untapped, explosive spiritual DNA with supernatural power in our inner being that we need to bring an access so that we may be a blessing to our community in the area that we live, to our very own family members, and throughout the world declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord with all of its benefits. However, there are things that hinder our ability to live a godly life in this world to the fullness of our spiritual DNA. As I was thinking of this, four main things came to my mind. Four enemies that we confront. The flesh, because our spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Ignorance, lack of knowledge of God, our Father, and of his word. Because if we knew God the way he wants us to know him and the way he has revealed himself to us in our spirit and in the word, we'd be living to the maximum of our genetic spiritual information. Then, of course, there's the devil, our adversary, who roams around like a roaring lion looking whom to devour and who many times we do give a foothold or a place to live in. But then there's the fourth that I had not considered. And I was watching with my wife, uh, uh, one of the uh, channels of TBN, 
And I heard a preacher say that one of our strongest enemy is the inner me. I'll say that again. One of our strongest foes and enemy is my inner me. Can you say amen? Or can you say oh man? <laughs> and I truly believe that's where our Telios program jumps in and comes in. And it's a blessing and a deliverance and to live in freedom and to the maximum of our spiritual DNA where we deal with our inner me that helps us captive, in bondage, enslaved, fearful. But through that process, we are set free. We, and that's what I believe deals with the soulish DNA. But that's a message for another day. So I really encourage you that when those um, classes, the seminars start up again, for Talios, jump in it. Feet first, just go for it. That you may experience the freedom that God has for you in his word and in his presence. And you may activate to his full potential the spiritual DNA that is within you. God has deposited within us all which we need to live in a righteous, holy, overcoming, powerful, and godly life. And we can live that in this world for his kingdom. Second Peter chapter 1. According to his divine power, doesn't come from anybody or just, you know, whomever, but according to his divine power, has given unto us, check this out, has given unto us all things, his DNA, that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. He's given you and me everything that we need. To get, live a godly, righteous, virtuous life because of his spiritual DNA and genetic information that is within us. Second Timothy chapter 3. But mark this, or in other words, pay attention. There will be terrible times in the last days. Here we go. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiven, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treasurers, rash, con Conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having the form of godliness, but denying his power. Having, have nothing to do with such people. Now, before we get all holy roller stuffy with me, how many of us have been there? How many of us now and then jump in that pool? We don't have to. There's no need to. First of all, if you haven't, your life can be secured in Christ Jesus that will bring you out of that darkness and into his life. And in verse 10, you, however, know all about my teaching, teaching, knowledge, understanding, information, my way of life, the walking out, the spiritual DNA, my purpose, Faith, passion, patience, love, endurance, persecution, sufferings. What kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, in Iconium, and Lystra? The persecutions 
I endured. But check this out. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. See, God's spiritual DNA and genetic information within us is not to keep us from all the trials and, and conflicts and strife and things that life sends against us. It is to walk through with us through those stuff, bring us out the other side in victory, in health, in life, and for his glory. So when we go through these things, there might be the tendency to say, oh, Lord, but why me? Why me, oh, God? Well, the question that comes to my mind is why not? I know you probably say, well, better him than me. But you can say, why me? Because God wants to show himself mighty powerful. He wants to show his fatherhood. He wants to see his DNA of sonship in you as you walk through those things, grabbing a hold of his hand and proclaiming victory over sickness, over health, over poverty, over problems. Whatever life shoots at you, whatever the enemy throws at you, you can take the spiritual DNA, you can take God as his hand, take a bat and shoot it right back at him. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live godly, live a godly life in Christ Jesus, will be persecuted. Can you say yay? <laughs> Man, you hear too many. <laughs> but that's where the rubber meets the road. Amen. That's where reality it's face to face. That in the midst of persecutions, we stand firm. We hold fast. Because we know we're not an accident. We know we're not a happenstance. We know that we were created with a purpose, with a destiny. We were created to bring him glory in our lives in every single Situation. What time do we have? Almost closing time. <laughs> Got so much more I want to share with you. Let me tell you, Cross Point Church, the fact of the matter is that DNA, which determines fatherhood, DNA determines sonship. DNA determines your family. DNA determines your characteristics. And God is love. And his love is in us. And he has given us the capacity to love even those that do us wrong. That's part of the characteristics of our DNA. God is holy, and his holiness is within us. He has given us all things that pertain to godliness, that we may live a godly, holy, righteous life before him in this world for his kingdom. God is omniscient. His knowledge is within us. We have, according to scripture, the mind of Christ. We have his word. We have his presence. God is omnipresent. His presence is within you, within me. We walk with his presence. We are bearers and carriers of his presence. And I like what the Paul writes in Romans 15, 29. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the full measure of the blessing of Christ. You are a God-bearer, a bearer of God's presence. You are a Christ-bearer. Wherever you enter, wherever you go, wherever your feet step, 
right there is the fullness of the measure of the blessings of God because his DNA, his genetic information, all that he is, is within you and within me. And there is no devil in hell that can stand in that place and not shake and tremble. There is no sickness that cannot be cast out because by his stripes we have been healed. There is no lack that can be met because we have an abundant life in Jesus Christ. Wherever you step, it steps the presence of the almighty, omnipresent God. God is omnipotent. His power is in you. That's why Paul declares, I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation. And there the term salvation can be translated into healing, deliverance. Luke 9, 1, when Jesus called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive all demons and to cure diseases. So with this, I conclude, cross point. Your spiritual DNA has determined sonship to the most high God, which has determined your benefits, your inheritance, and your citizenship. There will be no illegal aliens in heaven, I tell you that. <laughs> you are a force to be reckoned with. Tap into the explosive power of your spiritual DNA. You, mighty men of women, power, faith, in holiness. Go in peace in Jesus' name.